One of the most important secret ingredients that you and I need to be able to ask Allah successfully whatever we want. And we all have things we want. And th those are secrets between us and Allah. But if you're really going to be able to ask in, in, in a way that you're truly hopeful that Allah Azza wa will respond to what you're asking for, there are some things that have to be in place. And one of the most important things that the Qur'an keeps highlighting that has to be in place is that you and I have to ask Allah to forgive us first. You have to ask Him to forgive us first. Before you ask Him anything else, anything else that you want or I want, we need to be able to genuinely ask Allah to forgive us. And I'm saying today, you know, you might, people ask, which dua can I make for forgiveness? Or which, what are the best words I can say to, for this dua? Or, you know, people have duas for separate occasions. So when a woman is expecting, she'll email me or she'll come up to me and say, look, I'm going to have a baby. Which dua can I make right now? Or somebody will say, I'm going for a job interview. Which dua can I make right now? Right? I, it's always this, give me the special dua for the special occasion. Let me tell you, those words are important because they're sacred and they're revealed. But the dua for all occasions, is actually seeking Allah's forgiveness. The dua to open up all of your problems, get rid of all of your problems, the one dua that takes care of everything is genuinely seeking Allah's forgiveness. Nuh salam invites his people, you know, for over nine centuries. He's doing constant da'wah to them. And at the end of that career, he looks back and he summarizes the, the message that he was trying to give them. Of course, he didn't have one speech with them. He didn't talk to them once or twice. Laylan wa nahara, da'utu qawmi laylan wa nahara. Night and day, he didn't even take nights off. He's constantly inviting them, constantly inviting them. And in a surah dedicated to his name, Surah Nuh, the surah of Nuh alayhi salam, he himself summarizes the entire message he was giving his people this whole time. What is it that I want from you? Inni kullama da'utuhum li lahum. Every time I was inviting them, I was only inviting them, calling them to this faith, so you could forgive them, Ya Rabbi. So you could forgive them. And then literally he says, here's how I invited them. This is what I exactly said to them over and over and over again. Qult, I said, Istaghfiru Rabbakum. Seek forgiveness of your master. Innahu kana ghaffara. Certainly Allah is someone who keeps on forgiving and keeps on forgiving and keeps on forgiving. And he does it repeatedly. But what he says after that is so remarkable. He said, you people, and I need you to understand who he's talking to. He's talking to some, one of the worst nations in history. Nuh alayhi salam is described as one of the worst nations of all the nations. Places like Surah Al-Qamar, where Allah destro, des, describes different nations, or even Surah Al-Dhariyat, Allah describes different nations of the past that rebelled against Allah, that rebelled against the prophets and were destroyed. When he gets to Nuh alayhi salam's nation, what does he say? وَقَوْمَ نُوحٍ مِّن قَبْلِ إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا هُمْ أَظْلَمَ وَأَطْغَى the nation of Nuh from much before, they, they certainly were more wrongdoing and more rebellious than everyone else. Like he has the worst condemnation of the people of Nuh. It makes sense. They had a messenger, not from for one generation, like every other prophet. They had a, genera a, a prophet, three generations, four generations, every century, every two decades, there's a new generation of kids that have grown up. And he's seen that century after century after century after century. He's seen 40, 50 generations of people. And they've all rejected him. And he's making the same invitation to all of them. So I'm not, I'm, the, the, the thing I, I, the reason I brought this up is for a purpose. He's talking to very, very bad people. He's talking to the worst of the worst. What, is, what offer does he make to them? He says, Istaghfiru Rabbakum. Seek forgiveness of your master. Innahu kana ghaffara. He keeps on forgiving over and over and over again. You guys have been messing up over and over again. Allah keeps forgiving over and over again. But he, his offer doesn't stop there. He says, Yursili sama'a alaykum midrara. Yursili. It's actually jawab al-amr here. What that means is, if you seek his forgiveness, then Allah will open up the sky for you and it'll start pouring on you. Now that could be a reference to rain. That could be a reference to rain. And ironically, it's not a reference that you will get flooded. They, they did get flooded, right? They did get flooded, but Allah is talking about a different kind of rain now. If you seek forgiveness, that same rain that destroyed them will be the rain that brings them life. They didn't pray for rain. They didn't ask for rain. And they just, Allah just asked them to make dua to be forgiven. But if you ask dua to be forgiven, the sky will open up and start pouring. Now Allah did not say water will pour. Allah, will, Allah did not say water will pour. He said the, the sky will pour. Because the sky has a lot more than water. The sky has forgiveness. 
that comes from the sky. The sky has peace, tranquility, faith, your provision, the solution to your problems. They come from the sky. He will open the floodgates and everything held from the treasures of Allah that you haven't been getting because you haven't been seeking forgiveness is going to open up. Just ask for forgiveness. You're asking to solve problem A, problem B, problem C. There are problems you don't even know you have. Allah knows that you have them. If you and I just became genuine people of seeking forgiveness, then those problems would start getting solved by divine intervention. يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا And that's not even enough. You're asking forgiveness. For who? Yourself. اِسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ And seek forgiveness for yourself. He says, وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ And he will extend you by giving you money and giving you children. He will further your good legacy with money and kids. It's not even money that will lead you away from Allah. Because it's in the context of you seeking forgiveness. He'll give you good money that will lead to you doing more good and benefit you in this worldly sense and in the akhirah sense. And He'll give you good children that will give you goodness while they're alive. They will respect you, show you love, obey you, make you proud. They will give you happiness when they're alive. And even when you're gone, they'll continue to do good deeds that become a continuous investment for you after you're in your grave. Allah will give you all of these things. By the way, this is the same two words, money and children. Later on, إِنَّهُمْ عَصَوْنِي وَاتَّبَعُوا مَنْ لَمْ يَزِدْهُ مَالُهُ وَوَلَدُهُ إِلَّا خَسَارًا They disobeyed me, and they only followed the people whose money and his kids do nothing but cause them more loss. Money and kids are a means of loss. But when money and kids come from Allah, after you seek forgiveness, they become gain. See, the, it's the same money and kids. It's the same money and kids. The only difference is, now they have the blessing of Allah's forgiveness on top of them. It's like they were contaminated until Allah purified them with His forgiveness. Istaghfiru rabbakum And look, seek Allah's forgiveness. What doesn't open up? The sky opens up in ways you can't imagine.